Good morning and welcome to worship this morning and thank you for those that are joining us at home. Um, have a fairly long list of uh, joys and concerns uh, this morning. A lot of uh, thank yous for things that are going uh, on in the community. Uh, thank you to Central Lion Administration and teachers for their dedication during their online teaching and throughout the entire year. Uh, thanks also to Central Lion for coordinating the senior parade and for the signs for the seniors. Uh, prayers for the graduating seniors and their future plans. Um, thank you to the Central Lion retirees for their years of service and for the, uh, this new chapter in their lives. Prayers that uh, that would be a joyful time for them. Uh, prayers for those dealing with health issues during this time uh, as they're often attending appointments and hospitalizations alone. Uh, prayers for those who are suffering with anxiety and depress depression and um, feel, you know, encourage one another to reach out for help if, if you need that. Uh, prayers for our farmers. Uh, for the EMTs and first responders, uh, prayers for Daxton, um, thanks to all the volunteers who make church happen. Also, prayers for Barb Middle, who's facing some um, health issues. And Maggie wanted me to add prayers for her dog, Trixie, who's currently in the pet hospital after she ate sugarless gum that uh, has an ingredient that can be deadly to dogs. So we'll hopefully pick her up later today. So those are the prayer concerns. Please be in prayer for all of those, and uh, thank you to all of those that were mentioned this morning. So let's uh, begin with our praise song. I raise a hallelujah in the prayer.
Gracious God, we come before you this morning, sometimes feeling like we are in the middle of the storm. And so we ask that you would enable us to lift our voices and sing a little louder in the midst of that, that we would keep praising you, keep holding on to the strength that you offer us. We lift up this morning um, all of those things that we mentioned when we started, all of the reasons to be thankful, uh, all of the things that are going on in the community and the schools to support our students and um, the best wishes for those that are retiring and those graduates that are going into the world. Um, we lift up prayers, especially for those that are having difficulty at this time, those that are facing health issues um, and are often having to do that alone, and those that are uh, feeling lonely and d discouraged and uh, are needing help. Um, help us to reach out in your name and um, offer your strength and your love to those that are needing it. We lift up especially Daxton, and we lift up Barb Middle, who's facing some health issues. Uh, we just ask that you continue to bless all of those that are in the midst of needs, whatever they may be that you might continue to be their rock and their strength, that they might find in you healing and peace. It is in the name of Christ that we pray. Amen.
going to start over. Okay, blow hard. <laughs> you ready? Lord, may the words of my mouth and may the meditations of all of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. We continue our uh, series on hope. Uh, this series comes out of the Church of the Resurrection and the sermon um, by Adam Hamilton using parts of it. Um, the idea that um, we have hope as Christians that might be a little different than those that are not believers. Um, today we're going to be looking for hope in the writings of Paul. We've looked at the Psalms, we've looked at the prophets, we've looked at the gospel, and today we turn to the epistles, many of which were written by the Apostle Paul. Uh, we're working with the definition of hope is that is the conviction that despite one's present circumstances, the future will, in some meaningful sense, be better than the present. That is our hope, and that's what Scripture teaches us. Paul is a champion of hope. If you uh, look at concordances of the Bible that show references to certain words and you look at uh, Psalms, which we looked at a few weeks ago, there are 22 references to hope. And that's a lot. That's the second most of any book in the Bible. But if you look at Paul's letters and Paul's um, preaching as recorded in Acts, uh, Paul has 67 references to hope. He's the apostle of hope. And so we look today at uh, why did he have such hope and what difference did it make in his life, the way he lived, and how he preached for Christ, and how can we also lay hold of that hope. Paul, or Saul as he was known before his conversion, was a Jewish rabbi uh, born in Tarsus, which is now in southeast Turkey. Uh, it was rare in those times for a Jewish rabbi to also be a Roman citizen. But apparently Paul's parents were wealthy enough to become Roman citizens, and so he was born as a Roman citizen. He was well-educated. He was ambitious. And when Paul was in Jerusalem looking for a way to make a name for himself, there was also another rabbi there named Jesus, who some had claimed to be the Messiah. And after his crucifixion, his disciples in Jerusalem were going about preaching and teaching in his name, saying that he had risen from the dead, that he was the long-awaited Messiah. Paul didn't seem to have ever known Jesus, but he knew that he needed to put an end to what he considered this blasphemous teaching, this preaching in Jesus' name. 
So he volunteered to be the one who would uh, arrest Christians and make an effort to silence this movement. He oversees the death of the first Christian martyr, Stephen, as he is stoned. And then he's given papers to be able to go to Damascus to officially arrest people there and put an end to this movement once and for all. But on that way, on that trip to Damascus, there's suddenly a blinding light that strikes Paul down. It leaves him blind. And he hears a voice, a voice he perceives to be the voice of Jesus, saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Totally undone by this, he's led by his helpers to Damascus, where he waits three days, unable to see, not understanding what's happening, a time of great disorientation or disorder, if ever there was one. God sends a believer, a man by the name of Ananias, to Paul. And he prays for Paul. He witnesses to the power of Christ. And Paul not only regains his sight, but he's converted. He's baptized as a believer of Jesus Christ. And so Paul went from being an enemy of Christ to one of his most fervent preachers. But it was not always easy for Paul. In fact, it was seldom easy for Paul. On his first missionary journey, as recorded in Acts, the first town uh, he goes into, he's forced to flee along with Barnabas because people want to arrest them and put them to death. The next place, he's beaten and left for dead on the edge of town before he ever gets to town. And yet he gets up and goes into town and preaches anyway. Heads to his third town where they also want to kill him. This is how his mission is going. He's seeing some fruit, some people are listening, some people are coming to believe in Christ, but he's seeing a lot of adversity and a lot of pain. On his second missionary journey, he ends up in Philippi, which is in modern-day Greece. There was a slave girl there who was making a lot of money for her owners because she had a spirit of fortune-telling. Paul commanded that spirit to come out, and it did, and she was healed. Of course, this infuriated her owners because now she couldn't tell fortunes anymore, their source of income, they could no longer make money off of her, and so they had Paul arrested. He was arrested, beaten, shackled, thrown into a dungeon along with Silas. And after being beaten and imprisoned, what were he and Silas doing? Well, scripture says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. The jailer at the prison that night listened too, and he was converted along with his entire family. So here's Paul praying and singing songs of praise after he's been beaten nearly to death and sitting in a prison cell. When we're looking to find keys as to how Paul can be an apostle of hope in the midst of adversity, the first key is that he praised God in adversity. He gave thanks to God. He looked for things to be grateful for. He anticipated things that he could be grateful for in the future. So he was able to sing and pray. Maybe some of you have found what I have found, that when I'm in the midst of difficult times, when I'm upset, confused, disappointed, I just keep singing. And especially those songs of praise that remind me of God's faithfulness, in them I find hope helps me make it through the midst of the storm. Singing, praying, giving thanks to God helps to fill us with peace and fill us with hope. Paul writes, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Adam Hamilton tells a story about a woman in his congregation that he says embodies this message of hope. Um, her son, when he was three years old, was diagnosed with stage four neuroblastoma, a cancer that is extremely hard to treat. And then his treatment caused a secondary cancer and then became impossible to treat. They were given no hope for his recovery. And in the midst of that, she was also diagnosed with breast cancer. They were both receiving chemo at two different locations at the same time. So she was walking through this horrible time, unbelievably hard, a seemingly hopeless situation. And when asked how she could even stand, let alone walk in such a difficult time, she said, the key for me was I had to look for things I could be grateful for every day. 
I had to think about what in my life can I find to be thankful for in the midst of all of this. And gratitude gave me the strength. It gave me the hope. I had to keep looking for things to be thankful for. But as I looked for them, and as I gave God thanks for them, I found hope. Paul did the same. He would continue to deal with affliction for the rest of his life, his entire ministry, until eventually he was put to death for his faith. If anyone has any doubts about whether Paul's life as an apostle for Jesus Christ was one with adversity, here's what he writes in his letter to the Corinthians. I've been beaten more times than I can count. I've faced death many times. I've received the 40 lashes minus one from the Jews five times. I was beaten with rods three times. I was stoned once. I was shipwrecked three times. I spent a day and a night on the open sea. I've been on many journeys. I faced dangers from rivers, robbers, my people, and Gentiles. I faced dangers in the city, in the desert, on the sea, and from false brothers and sisters. I faced these dangers with hard work and heavy labor, many sleepless nights, hungry and thirsty, often without food, and in the cold without enough clothes. Besides all the other things I could mention, there's my daily stress because I'm concerned about all the churches. Now, this does not sound like an easy life. Sometimes we think of people that are generally filled with hope and, and cheerful, and we think of them as happy-go-lucky, uh, having easy lives, not having anything to worry about. And we think, well, why wouldn't they have, a, have hope when they have things so easy? But this guy had a hard life, and still he had hope. And part of it was that he was able to give thanks in every circumstances, circumstance, knowing that that was the will of God in Christ Jesus. But there was another reason that Paul had hope. He had hope in the face of ongoing persecution because he believed in Jesus. He not only believed in Jesus, but he believed that Jesus died and rose again. And in Jesus' resurrection, God had conquered death, conquered hate and sin and evil and all of the rest of it. And because it had been defeated, Paul knew that no matter what happened, no matter how bad it was, it was going to turn out okay in the end. This is the confidence you have when you believe in the resurrected Christ. Paul was able to say, I know that Christ is risen from the grave, and I don't have to be afraid. Even if I die, I live. Paul writes, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. How is that possible, to have that kind of faith, that perseverance? Well, it was possible because he believed in the resurrection. It was possible because he believed that God was bigger than all these things, that Christ had triumphed over them, and because he trusted in Christ, no matter what happened, no matter how hard it was, he might be confused, he might be knocked down, he might be beaten and in a prison cell, but it wasn't the end of the story. It wasn't for him, and it's not for us. Paul goes on to say, we do not lose heart, for we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. He's talking about resurrection. He's basically saying, I know even if I die, it's okay. I'm not afraid because I know who my Redeemer is. I know I'm going to live with him after this life is over with. Our life is fundamentally different if we believe in the resurrection. It changes how you face life, how you face death, how you face adversity. Paul wrote to one of the little churches in Thessalonica who had experienced the death of one of their members and were grieving over that loss. He said, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Now, he's not saying, don't grieve. It's natural to grieve the loss of someone you care about. But he's saying, we grieve a little differently because we're people of hope. We believe they're with God in a place where love reigns. That gives us hope. We live our lives differently when we believe this. That's why Paul lived as he did, as a person of hope. Paul also had an absolutely unshakable belief that God would take the adversity in life and force it to accomplish good. 
He refused to believe that any hardship or adversity would be wasted if it were placed in God's hands. Instead, he believed that God would force good from adversity and suffering and pain. Now, that doesn't mean that we believe that God causes the suffering and pain, but we believe that when we place things that do bring us suffering and pain in God's hands, God says, I'm not going to let this be wasted. I'm going to bring something beautiful and good from it. That's why we can say with Paul, and this is our memory verse for this week, we know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. It doesn't say that God is responsible for the bad stuff, but that he can take it and make it accomplish something good and beautiful. This is what Paul believed. This is what he saw, that every beating, every imprisonment, every time he was thrown out of a town, somehow God was going to make something good come out of that. This is expressed in his letter to the church in Philippi, written from a prison cell, maybe in Rome, as he awaited word of whether or not he was going to be executed. It's called Paul's epistle of joy. He writes an epistle of joy from a prison cell waiting for possible death. He writes, I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is for Christ. While most people in Paul's place would have been thinking, why me, God? I've served you so well. Why is this happening to me? Here was Paul saying, how cool is this? Here are some people who don't know Christ, and I get to share with them my hope in Christ. Because of his hope in Christ, he can say, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Because ex his experience was, as he looked back over his life, that every hard thing that had ever happened, God had brought something good and beautiful from it. This is why Paul had hope. We need probably to look at our own lives and see if we have seen the opportunities behind our adversities. Are we listening? Are we looking? Are we paying attention to what God might do through what we place in his hands? Well, back to that mother and son who both had cancer at the same time, with the son being given virtually no chance of surviving. In the midst of that awful situation, the mother saw how few treatment options there were for children with cancer compared to what was available in her fight against breast cancer. And so she, with the help of some friends, established an organization in honor of her son. And it's raised $4.1 million for research into childhood cancer in the hope of other children, helping other children to survive. In the middle of her adversity, she saw an opportunity, and that brought her hope and joy. God was able to bring something good even out of the most horrendous circumstances. And by the way, today, both she and her son, who is now 16, are cancer-free. I close with a reminder of our memory verse. We know that God works all things together for good, for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. In this is our hope. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the witness of people like Paul, who in the midst of the most difficult circumstances still had hope hope in the resurrected Christ, hope that you have already triumphed over all things and that in the end you will make all things new and that you will take all that has happened to us and make it into something good. Help us to continue to believe the way that Paul believed and to continue to have that hope, to be thankful, to sing praises to you, to have hope in the midst of whatever life might bring us. We thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ who makes that hope possible. It is in his name that we pray as we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hope is in the resurrected Christ. So go to hope nonetheless, hope despite, hope still. We go, praying God will strengthen us to hope where we have ceased to hope. Hope amid what threatens hope, hope beyond what we have hoped. Holy Spirit, empower us with hope that defies expectations, hope that questions what we have known, hope that makes a way where there is none. Amen. Oh, 